Hey you all, I'm so happy to fellow dressmakers. You're welcome to another interesting tutorial. My name is Confidence. In this video, I'll be showing you how to cut and sew this cute pleated cow caftan with keyhole neckline. So the green one is the one I saw on Pinterest as an inspiration, while the red one is the one I made. The green one is short, but I made mine as a long gown, and mine also came with some tricks, which I'll be showing you in this video. You can snatch the front waist, or you wear it as a free gown like this, and then I also added some pockets to mine. So without wasting much of your time, let's get to this. So these are the materials I'll be using for this tutorial. I have this floral material and then this red satin material and invisible zipper. For the floral material, I used one and a half and then for the red, I used two yards. First, we'll go ahead and draft before we transfer to the fabric. And as you can see, my pattern paper is ready. Aside from this top here, I measure down to my bust line, which is, which is 10 inches, even though it's not needed. And then I'll measure the waist line. I use 17 inches here and then from that point i'll measure down to the hip line okay i'm just trying to get a straight line that's what i'm doing here and after that i will label it bust waist and hip now go ahead and take your shoulder measurement divided by two and then from that point you determine the length of the sleeves you want after the pleats go ahead and mark it now you're going to start from there your length of sleeves to mark the measurement for the pleats for the pleats you're going to use at least four inches for each pleat so if you want four pleats that means you're going to add 20 inches i know right it's supposed to be 16 but you do 20 inches for me i want three pleats and i'm marking 16 inches here plus one inch hemming allowance okay i'm just trying to highlight the four four inches so that you see it clearly Please also know that I started from the length of my sleeves after my shoulder measurement divided by 2. I measured the sleeve length and then from that point I measured 16 inches plus extra 1 inch allowance. And that's 17 inches. Now we'll come to this shoulder divided by 2 here and then mark 1 inch as shoulder slope. I'm going to slant it to meet the length of the sleeves, the total length of the sleeve. And by the time I measure it, it's a, a round um two and a half three inches now start from that shoulder slope line and measure the my round sleeves plus extra three inches allowance then from that point i'm going to come in by one inch you can watch my previous tutorial about how to make cow caftan if this is too fast for you now come to the bust line and measure my bust circumference divided by four plus extra three inches I'll do the same for the waist and then I'll do the same for the hip line. Now on the hip line, I'm going to come up by 2 inches. You can decide to leave with uh, at that hip line, but I want that floral material to stop 2 inches before the hip line. Now I'm going to connect it from that round sleeve measurement. I'm going to curve it like that to make that 2 inches above the hip line. And you can possibly leave it like this. I'm going to just slant it like you see me doing here. Okay. Like I said, you can decide to leave this directly on your knee and um, hip line. But I choose to go up two inches before the hip line. Whatever I have on the hip now, I'm going to mark that all the way to the down. And I didn't mention before that this is not the length I'm working with. Please. This is just the length of this pattern paper. I will be extending the length on my fabric. For the neckline, it's not a tortoise neck, so I'm doing three and a half by three and a half for the front neckline, and I'm going to curve it like you see me do here. And for the back, I use three and a half by two. We are cutting both the front and back pattern on this same pattern. We will be modifying it later on, okay? So after all of that, we are going to do the keyhole on the neckline, the keyhole neckline. So on this front neckline measurement, go in by one inch and then from that point, you're going to go down by four inches or better still start from the top like this and measure to the, yeah, your desired neckline depth. So if you want exactly what is on the thumbnail, go ahead and do just one inch for this keyhole. I use one and a half for mine. Now go in one inch or one and a half from that keyhole line 
I use one and a half. You can do one if you want. Then you're going to connect it from that point to the hip line, or better still, you can connect it to this point. So I choose to connect it to that two inches above the hip line, and this is what I'm going to do. You're going to slant it like you see me do here, and that's it. So this part will be for the plain material and the other part will be the floral material. The next thing we'll do now is to go ahead and cut. First, I'm cutting off the shoulder slope and then I'll cut the sleeve and of course the body. It's only been a few days, I set my eyes on you babe. Is it love at first I turn on the light, see you the mess you made. One, two, in love with you. The night after that, I'll cut the back neckline first. Then I'll cut off the floral part of this um, dress. I'm going to go ahead and transfer this plain one to the red fabric and show you. So this is what we have. Can you see that? I'm just going to cut it straight away. But just so you know, I'm cutting for both front and then the back. So one part of this is folded and then the other extended part from the paper is the zipper allowance. I don't know if that makes sense. If it's easier for you to cut it one one, just go ahead and do that. But I'm cutting for both front and then the back. And one part is folded, which is the front. Okay. I'm going to cut half inch away. And like I said before, I will, I will be extending the length of this gown on the fabric. I already have 45 inches on that part that I showed you. And then I measure 17 inches from that point. And that's the length of this, which is 16 inches plus 2 inches having allowance okay and that's it i'll just go ahead and remove this one now so that i'll cut the front neckline i'll arrange it like so pin it down then i'll place the paper on it again So let me just cut off the paper so that you see you see it clearly can you see so the front neckline is ready the next thing i'll do now is to just cut facing for the keyhole you see this fabric here i'm just going to use it and trace out everything i have here on the neckline and then curve it like so it's as simple as that now i'm going to notch the waist line of this part if you're interested in adding belt for yours to make the waist tighter, you go ahead and do the same thing. I went ahead to transfer the pattern to the floral material. That is the part that is supposed to be the sleeves. Let's just call it the sleeves. And I'm measuring it to show you that you need at least one and a half. I didn't use up to one and a half here. But just to be on the safe side, you use one and a half. I'm basically going to repeat the same thing I did for the red, which is cutting half inch away. Even though you don't necessarily need this, this half inch. <laughs> so after that, I cut off the neckline for the front and then I cut it off on the fabric too. Make sure you're not cutting the full fabric. Okay. Then I try to label it back and then this one front so that it's easier for me why i want to join okay now that we are done with cutting let's go ahead and start joining and the first thing i do is to go ahead and turn the neckline this keyhole here and then i'll use hemming gum to glue the facing to the fabric i'll stitch the zipper allowance i'll give a space for the zipper and then also a space for slits at the down part and after turning and ironing this is what we have can you see that if i measure it i have up to four inches which i actually need three inches don't worry we'll get to that so this is what the front looks like and this is what the inside looks like like i said i use the gum to glue the facing to the main fabric and for the back i left this tiny space for slits it's not needed i tell you it's not needed but i just have to leave it there and then also left a space for zipper the upper part now let's go ahead and join the sleeves to the main to the red one and to do that we first join the shoulder part okay 
for this to be easier for you you're going to notch this part so that you know that that part is going to the shoulder so after that you're going to uh, place one one down and then you take let's say this is the front i'm going to take the one that is supposed to be going to the front and then i'm going to place it make sure it's upper part to upper part right place the front to the back you're going to join it on the shoulder i'm going to do the same thing for the other one place it like so then you place the back on it make sure you join it on that part that you notched as the shoulder part of this okay so after joining i went ahead to iron it to have something as neat as this can you see that i pressed open the stitches to have this neat and seamless finishing <laughs> now for the chairman of the occasion which is the pleat you're going to measure nine inches here if you're measuring nine inches i'm going to do nine and a half but me i want to do eight so i'm just going to do eight and a half for the half inch that's the half inch we added around the neckline for joining allowance so you're not going to include that that's why you are marking eight and a half i'm going to do the first pleat remember the width is supposed to be two inches because you added four inches for each pleat right after that you're going to um, pleat again when we were cutting i actually mentioned that shoulder slope is not needed i be no mention so this is why it's important it's really not needed for this tutorial but uh, i choose to do it so that it, it will guide me to have an accurate um um measurement while i'm pleating okay making sure making sure i pleat on that shoulder joining all right it makes it easier because you know it's straight if it's straight or not i don't know if you understand i'm going to um pleat this until i get what i want can you see that this is the second trial and i think i have what i want i'll still go ahead and show you um again i'm going to measure eight and a half and then on the hem part come up by three inches i think this method is what we use okay then you're going to pleat from that eight and a half you have the first pleat just as you can see me do here it's really simple you have the second one and then the third one make sure all all the joining all the lines there are matching up make sure they are aligning that's why you have the joining there right then you're going to pin it down at this part too so that it's easier for you to iron it while you want to iron and then another thing i want to say is please make sure you are using a, a thick fabric this fabric is super light it almost affected the pleats but god passa <laughs> so after that after ironing this is what i have now take your hand needle with your thread in it i'm going to start tacking turn this to the wrong side please turn it to the wrong side then you're going to um stitch it here look as you can see me do make sure your doing it neatly so that it doesn't show on the right side okay i'm passing the the needle to go to the right side right but when you turn it to the right side you won't see my thread Be that's because i made sure i did a very close stitching i don't know if you understand i'll do the second pleat and then i'll do the third one you can you can see how I'm, I'm stitching this and where I'm doing it. So after all of that, I'm going to knot the thread so that it will not lose. I would be I would be the same process for these two sides. The same thing I did for this center. I'm going to do it on this side, just about five inches away from the center. And after that, can you see that? Can you see? It's already giving us what we want right now the next thing we'll do now is to take the red one and then we are going to place this floral one 
on it make sure the front neckline is going to the front part of this red and then the back is going to the back i'm going to place it like so right side facing right side and then you're going to pin it down pin it down and then after that you take the back it's already easy after doing the first m um, the front one you place the back on the back part of this pin it down just like you did for the front go to your sewing machine and stitch it without having to added a seam allowance okay so i'll go ahead and do that and then after that this is what i have i'm just going to go ahead and close the sides fold the sleeves like so just the same way you fold your fabric while you want to close the side and then make sure you match up this joining you see this joining here please make sure you match it up it's really important pin it down after you are sure that the, the two join in a line and then you're going to stitch it on the side to have something like this i can't wait to show you what this looks like <laughs> I mean, you already seen it. So, without wasting much of our time, let's go ahead and do the neckline. And you're going to fold the neckline into two, like so. Pin it down. Just fold it into two. It's as simple as that. You have the center front and then the center back. Then take a fresh fabric, fold the fabric too. And then make sure the folding part is going to the front neckline. Can you see that? Can you see? the folding part is going to the front neckline and then the space you give from that folding part from that folded part should be one and a half that's what we measured when we were cutting right make sure the space is one and a half then you're going to trace it out okay trace it out don't worry i'm just show you what it looks like in full now can you see that so the space from this um folded part is one and a half when i traced it out i also indicated where it stops at the back can you see now what i'm going to do is to add having chore around as folding allowance um i think we are kind of confused let me just use this white chalk to indicate the original line the main measurement then from that point i'm going to measure one and a half but i'm measuring two inches one and a half as the main measurement and then the other half as um joining allowance after that i'm just going to trace it out like you see me do here after tracing it out i'll go to my ironing table and then fold it on this down part and join it around here make sure you add interface i use this stay for mine okay now I want to quickly share this trick after folding the down part to have something like this make sure you pin it down before joining the neckline the round part okay so if you notice I have two stitches here that's because after stitching I noticed that some part is longer it's more than one and a half so this is what I basically did I measured one and a half using this fabric marker then I went ahead to stitch it again notched it and then um top stitch to have something as neat as this okay now it's time to join it to the neckline you're going to fold it into two get the midpoint highlight the midpoint and then on that midpoint go ahead and um, mark one and a half on both sides okay one and a half on both sides and that makes it three inches now place the one side of the keyhole neckline the keyhole on that one and a half measurement i don't know if you understand exactly where that one and a half stop you're going to start placing the neckline there one part and then you're going to uh, fold in half inch make sure what is going into this color let's just call it color is half inch okay then you pin it down half inch you pin it down make sure you're pinning it down because it's easier for you to um stitch on if after if you pin it down then you start from that the end of that one and that again on this second part you are going to repeat the same thing 
put in half inch inside this collar and then you're just basically going to repeat the same process on around make sure the, that the two that one is no longer you see this keyhole that one is no longer you're going to place it in pin it down and then go to your sewing machine and stitch it make sure you give a very neat stitch that's why you have to pin it down so that it's easier for you to stitch it all around and right after that i'll fix my zipper to have this i also went ahead to join the pocket which is not complicated if you've been following me on this channel you know how i do my pocket so i started from that notch that we give earlier on the front part and then i stitched the pocket on it like so it's simple one pocket going to the red and the other one to the further part now on that same notch again that same notch you're going to take the measurement of where you're going to place the belt okay so measure from one end of the notch to the other one your waist measurement divided by two and then whatever you have left you're going to share that into two i have five and half and i'm going to share it 2.75 on both sides like so by the time i measure it i have my 28 in 14 inches actually that is 28 inches then i highlighted it then take my belt which is already joined i use one and a half as the um height of this belt and then the length is your desired length okay just make sure it's something that can go around your waist and enough um, allowance to tie it i'm going to just stitch it down like so make sure you're stitching on the front pattern only only on the fr front pattern and your dress is ready can you see our zipper see how neat it came out if you don't know how to go about your invisible zipper i have a tutorial already on the channel go ahead and check it out and yo this is the finished look of our tutorial let me know your thoughts in the comment section which one do you prefer the snatched dress or the free dress free blue book after like that and with that being said i'll see you on my next one be good bye